Well, good afternoon, Central Georgia. Hopefully you're having a pleasant Saturday so far. There has been a lot of changes with Hurricane Aaron, especially in the past 24 hours. And right now the eye of the storm is just moving north of Puerto Rico. And right now we're not expecting any impacts for Central Georgia, and that's been pretty consistent all throughout the past couple of days. So let's get into the details. Let's look at the satellite and radar imagery of Hurricane Aaron. And let's just start off by talking about how impressive this rapid intensification has been over the past 24 hours. It has gained significant strength. And for reference, around two o'clock yesterday, it was just uh, right around the time where it became our first hurricane of the season and winds of up to 80 miles per hour. And it was a cat one hurricane all throughout yesterday. It wasn't until 11 o'clock last night where it finally reached category two strength. However, now it's a cat five hurricane, the maximum level possible by any hurricane. It has winds about to 160 miles per hour and the pressure right now 115 millibars. And for reference, a hurricane is just one extremely robust low pressure system. So the lower the pressure, the stronger the hurricane. <clears throat> so also another reference yesterday had winds of up to 80 miles per hour. Now the, the winds have been doubled and the pressure has dropped by almost 80 millibars. Extremely impressive stuff. Now looking more in depth, as I mentioned, the eye of the storm earlier it passed north of the North Le Leeward Islands. Now it's getting closer and closer to Puerto Rico, but the eye wall will not affect Puerto Rico as it just passes north of those areas. But Puerto Rico is receiving heavy rain and strong gusty winds, but they're not receiving the winds that are currently present along the right side and along the eye wall where 160 mile per hour winds are present. They're seeing winds closer to tropical storm force winds, so around 30 to 70 miles per hour. So gusty winds and heavy rainfall. So the main impacts for the Leroy Islands and the Puerto Rico area as of right now are just heavy rain and potential flooding. We're also seeing scattered rain along the eastern side of the Hispaniola, especially Dominican Republic. And I think the Turks and Caicos could be seeing some rain pretty soon. And also another thing to note earlier this morning, the wind direction changed. Hurricane Aaron originally had a northwesterly direction. Now it's more westerly, but we do expect this to return back to the northwestern direction by later tonight. And once it returns to its original direction, that's when it'll start its northward curve that we've been talking about all throughout the past week. So here's the new hurricane track. Actually, this is not the new hurricane track. There's supposed to be a new update at around five o'clock. Let me uh, click this graphic real quick. Let's see if it updates right there. <clears throat> and if not, we'll just use a two o'clock um, two o'clock track right over here. So once again, two o'clock track still shows it as a category five hurricane. But then once it starts to move towards the northwest and uh, starting to do its north northern curve, it'll enter a zone where it'll have higher wind shear. That means changes of winds along the atmosphere and most uh, likely along with height. So when you have changes of winds with different heights, it disorganizes the storm by a little bit. We're, we're expecting this to slightly weaken into a category four hurricane. So we're not going to see any major weakening over the past couple of days or over the next couple of days. Sorry. So it should be a category four hurricane with winds of up to 150 miles per hour. So just 10 miles per hour uh, less than what we are seeing. So really is still going to stay as a beast of a hurricane as we get into next week. Then we'll see it do its northward curve. And most of the models and the forecast track over the past couple of days have consistently shown the eye of the storm threading the needle in between the island of Bermuda and the coast of the Carolinas. And we're still seeing that agreement that the storm is going to completely miss the Atlantic coast. But that doesn't mean that they're free from any indirect impacts. We are still expecting some impacts for the coast. But for central Georgia, absolutely zero impacts are expected. 
So let's take a look at the sea surface temperatures. This is the main reason why the hurricane rapidly intensified over the past 24 hours. So when it was a tropical storm all throughout this past week, it was in an area of water where the sea surface temperatures were relatively cooler than what we are seeing right now. Uh, sea surface temperatures were into the lower 80s and then it went into that area where it has sea surface temperatures around 83 or 84 degrees and also close to 85 degrees. So that's just enough to really provide the storm with, let's say, jet fuel to intensify. And there was also zero shear. So without the shear, the storm just had all of the ability to intensify without any limiting uh, ingredients or any limiting factors stopping the storm from getting stronger. So that's the reason why this storm became a Cat 5 so fast. And it's also going to get into a even warmer area of water, but we are expecting some drier air and we are also expecting some wind shear that will make it slightly weaker than it is right now. So the reason why it's going to go northward is because we have two areas of high pressure nearby. So the one in the Atlantic, that's what we call a Bermuda high because it's generally close to the island of Bermuda. And then we also have another high pressure system along the inland parts of the United States. So that high pressure system in the United States, that's sort of, uh, it's going to act like as a shield and it's going to push this storm away from us. And the reason why it's going northward is because the clockwise motion of the winds from the Bermuda High, that high pressure system in the Atlantic, it's going to pull it towards the north. And then eventually it's going to pull it away from us. So that's the reason why we're expecting that northward curve. And then it's going to ste be steered away from the continental United States. Now the main question is, will the island of Bermuda see the eye of the storm? And we've, we've seen models flip-flop between the storm going a little bit towards the west or a little bit towards the east and impacting directly the island of Bermuda. Thankfully now most models has the storm threading the needle in between the coast of the Carolinas and the island of Bermuda. Here's the Euro model seeing great model confidence there. We also have the GFS model. Now this model has once again most of the models, actually not even most, all of the models having the storm passing just west of the island of Bermuda and east of the coast of, of the Carolinas. So this is what we call threading the needle uh, in the middle of both areas. And this is the best case scenario uh, for everyone because we don't want to see any direct impacts or any direct landfall. So most likely this storm is going to be what we call a fish storm because the only direct impacts are going to be seen for the fishes of the Atlantic. So here is the long range future view. Once again, the, both of the models colorized. So we have the GFS model in green and the Euro model in blue. And notice both models have these storms or has this storm threading the needle once again, agreeing with the path by the National Hurricane Center going in between the island of Bermuda and the coast of the Carolinas. The Euro model has the storm grazing the outer banks a little bit. When I mean grazing, I just mean uh, maybe providing a couple of showers and some breezy weather for the outer banks, but not seeing any direct impacts. And then the GFS model has the storm getting closer to Bermuda, but uh, avoiding any direct impact, so any landfall into the island of Bermuda. Now here's to say we are expecting some impacts for the coast of the Atlantic. So even though you're not expecting a direct hit or a landfall, we are expecting high surf. The waves are going to get gnarly. Uh, thankfully, the worst of the waves are going to move away from the coast, but we are expecting still high surf. So uh, anywhere from six to 10 feet waves along the coast. And we are also expecting strong rip currents associated with this storm. So there is still some things that can happen for the coast no matter what. Now in terms of 
any other areas of development. We have this one area of development, ironically, along the forecasted path of Aaron, as a 10% chance of development in the next two days and a 10% chance of development in the next seven days. So relatively very low rain chances, not rain chances, sorry, relatively low chances of development uh, overall. And it's just due to a couple of showers and storms associated with a disorganized area of low pressure that's moving out towards the east. And because of that, it's along an area in the water that has warm water. You just saw the temperatures in the ocean. They're extremely warm, especially for this time of year. So because of the storms and the disorganized area of low pressure being in an environment that's favorable for development, we're just keeping a, an eye on it overall. But by Monday, the National Hurricane Center says that the storms are going to move into an area where it's going to become more unfavorable. So the temperatures are going to get cooler in the ocean and it's not going to be enough to develop this potential disturbance into something more. So we're just keeping an eye on it just for now, but it's not expected to bring any impacts for anyone. So yesterday we had our first hurricane of the season. It was still behind schedule. Typically we see our first hurricane on August 11th. And so it was four days behind schedule. And in between the months of August and October, we see an average of 11 to 12 named storms. Now we are also behind schedule on that. We've seen one named storm so far on August, and that's Tropical Storm Dexter, which also took a similar route where it went in through the Atlantic and didn't impact anyone. But we do have to remember that the peak season is on September 10th. So even though it's quiet as of right now, we're not expecting any more development in the next seven days. Uh, we could see a huge uptick in activity once we get to, the, to early September or even mid-September. For those of you who remember Helene, Helene happened uh, late September, uh, around the 26th of September here in central Georgia. So the activity can definitely ramp up as we get into September. So if we do, or we will see another named storm, of course, because hurricane season is going to guarantee us another named storm. So the next named storm is going to be Fernand. That's the letter F name on the board. The letter G name is Gabrielle. And then, of course, the letter H. And the letter H, of course, holds some resonance. Of course, Helene. So the letter H on this year's Atlantic hurricane names is going to be Umberto. So once again, that's the, the in-depth analysis of uh, Hurricane Aaron. I'm just going to do a little two-minute recap of Hurricane Aaron and just going to go through those slides, but this time with more succinct information. So here we go. Once again, Hurricane Aaron, it is a beast of a storm. It's just passing north of Puerto Rico, and it's providing some tropical storm force winds for those areas, heavy rain. And it's moving towards the west at 16 miles per hour, but we are expecting the storm to move towards the northwest by later tonight. And around this point, it should make its northward curve. And it should go into an area where the at atmosphere is a little bit less conducive for development. So we have high shear and drier air. So that's why it should slightly weaken into a category four storm. But we are still expecting winds to go down to 150 miles per hour, which is still extremely high. And the forecast track also projects this storm to thread the needle in between the island of Bermuda and the coast of the Carolina. So it's, it's expected to miss the United States completely. Here's a look at the long range future view and it has both models, the Euro and the GFS, has, having the eye of the storm missing the continental United States. The GFS has a storm getting closer to Bermuda, but once again, not completely passing over the island. And then the Euro has a storm nudged to the west and it could graze the outer banks. But once again, we're not expecting a direct hit in terms of, uh, the, of the storm making landfall on the Atlantic coast. 
And for central Georgia, we're not expecting any direct impacts. But for the coast, we are expecting high surf and strong rip currents, especially for the majority of next week. There is also another area along the coast, ironically within the projected path of Aaron, has a 10% chance of development in the next two days and a 10% chance of development in the next seven days. This is all due to a broad area of low pressure that is moving towards the east, but by the National Hurricane Center and their discussion, they said that this broad area of low pressure is then going to go into a, a atmosphere that is less favorable for development. So really nothing to worry about with this blob that was flagged by the National Hurricane Center. Overall, extremely low chances of development in the next seven days.